Are you kidding me? The boom stand is right in the way. I can't see. Somebody get me a new director on the phone. Okay, people, I probably should have done this Toy Fair breakdown or the rest of Toy Fair. I already did Hasbro and Mattel. You can go back and watch that. I probably should have done this earlier in the week, but... Whew, man, the journey home was a pain in my ass. On the last flight of my trip, the last two hours, I got one of these messages. Uh, folks, this is your captain speaking. I just wanted to let everybody know that we're having a little bit of engine trouble. Uh, we had to shut off the right engine, so we'll be making an emergency landing in Memphis. Hopefully it's not too much. We'll get you on your way, and uh, thank you for flying Delta. So, of course, 12 hours later, I make it home, but that's just always my luck when I'm traveling. There are other factors on top of that, but let's talk about Toy Fair stuff. Let's talk about toys. Forget all that bullshit because I want to forget all that bullshit. And I've been thinking about what order to go in, and I'm just going to go in the order of I showed up Saturday morning, walked in, and go from there. My first stop in my Toy Fair extravaganza was the Super 7 booth. And of course, Masters of the Universe Classics, still looking great. Uh, they did say that Wave 1 is shipping now. They're just kind of showing up for some people. Some people are getting notices. But they did leave people back to actually be shipping during Toy Fair. And then for the stuff that's still up for pre-order, that'll be open until March, I think it's 15th, I think he said. That'll give you a chance to look at Wave 1 if you were on the fence about Wave 2, and then, you know, get your pre-order in if you do like the product. They were also showing some newer sculpts for the uh, line that looks like the cartoons, but follows the aesthetics of the original vintage line. I'm into six inch, super articulated, these are more five and a half inch, less articulated. But they look cool for what they are. Now, I did also ask about Thundercats. He said the talks were dead for a little bit until some crazy fan got a hold of the WB CEO somehow, some form or fashion, and got the CEO hot for putting product out there for Thundercats. So the talks are back on, but I also feel that... The talks have been on for a little while now. So as far as that news goes, I feel like it's just, it's not smoke being blown, but kind of just sitting in a holding pattern still. And both those points bring us around to Funko, who didn't have a lot that was interesting to me at least, but they were showing the Savage World line, which we've already seen the Mortal Kombat figures, but they were also showing Thundercats in the style of 80s vintage toys. Funko, you're looking over Super 7's shoulder. Shouldn't be doing that. What I found most interesting here is, yes, they got into some Thundercats, but they evened it out with the same amount of bad guys. So it's not just most of the good guys, a couple of bad guys like we've seen from other companies, you know. But they also showed horror figures, they showed some Conan figures. The big point they wanted to get across was they didn't know how they were going to release these. All the Thundercats at the same time and then all the other lines at the same time, or are they going to mix and match between the different lines? For Series 1, some Thundercats, some Conan, some horror figures. I'd, so it's up in the air, but they seem fairly confident that they would come out. But what does this mean for the Thundercats license? I don't know. If you move directly forward from the Funko booth, I do believe that was the Diamond booth, and they usually have other lines that they distribute around the corners, or, well, in glass cases right there facing out, and one of the ones that caught my eye was the Metacom Mafex little cube. They were showing some Justice League figures, they were showing, well, okay, this is nothing new, but seeing it again in person, it always makes me excited to actually get them, because with Metacom, just don't know when you're going to get them. But they had the Dark Knight line. They had Joker that just released up top. Then they had the Bane. They had Two-Face. They had uh, the Cop Joker that comes with the arms for the Joker that's already released up top. The Police Joker makes me want to get another one that just released so I can have a permanent jail cell Joker. Up in a corner above that was the 1000 Toys Iron Giant. Now this is a 6 inch Iron Giant. It's said that the articulation is amazing on it. It has a bunch of attachments. It has the S shield on the front. It has different heads, different eye versions. It looks like an amazing toy, but for $120, I, I have to have some rules. And one of my rules is don't buy action figures of iron robots that have crazy articulation and different eyes and such for over a hundred dollars just do not do it that's exactly what the rule says I know that's very specific but I gotta follow the rules 
or that's just me trying to talk myself out of a $120 little iron giant. And then on around the corner at the front of the booth, there was some Soap Studio stuff. I don't like their flash. I don't really like the arrow. I, they're okay, but I don't know. They seem awfully scrawny. I think I'm covered on Bane and Batman with the Mafex line, but I think I'm in for Bruce and Raish in their training gear, or Roz, or however you want to correct me in the comments section. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'll, I'll wait for you. Those two just seem like the figures that nobody else will give me. I didn't have an appointment with Diamond Select, so I didn't get to go into their little hidey hole room that they were showing all of their new stuff. But uh, Yay Toys Plus, or slash Inner City Geeks, he was kind enough to get me some pictures of the real Ghostbusters figures that they're showing off. I wasn't a huge fan of the cartoon, but these look cool, and they're different from every other Ghostbuster figure we've seen over the past... How many years? They were also showing off DC Collectibles Essentials figures. I, I'm still not sold on these. The hips look really, they look marionette-ish. They look good together. I like that they're kind of pairing up the characters, but do I need all of these characters again? I am hearing reports that they have big plans for the Essentials line, but I'm sure they had big plans for the Icons line too. So I may be just in for Rorschach because his trench coat hides all the weird stuff, but his mask is a little bit off. I, I don't know. And then there was the Marvel Select Beast. It looks okay. It looks good, but you get up to the head and it just doesn't look right. It doesn't look like that classic beast. And people can say they want alternate heads and such, and but I doubt Marvel Select will give us that. Are you wondering why I didn't have an appointment with Diamond Select? NECA was interesting. They were showing off uh, all four of the quarter scale Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles together along with the Raph in disguise. Like I said, I think last week they are resoliciting all four in June. But if you want to skip on the Raph, you can get the Raph in disguise because it's the exact same figure, just with trench coat and hat. And that's not me speculating. They came out and said it. Hey, if you want that Raph, go ahead and get the version with the trench coat and such. They could have lied to my face like I get from some other booths, but they didn't. They came out and just said it. So I'm good with NECA. Also of the quarter scale variety, I've managed to skip the Deadpool so far. The first version, the X-Force version, but this damn ultimate quarter scale Deadpool, it's got me. Now they said the head with the brain showing with the top cut off, it's got a cap piece that goes on it, or you can take the baseball cap and put it on and it looks right because the top of the hat. It, well, the top of the head is missing. I dig the sound effect piece that comes up around the gun, but most of all, I love the unmasked head. Now, they said the pizza that's dripping down over his head for whatever reason, it's just a snap-on piece. It comes off, there's no peg, there's no hole, there's no nothing. So, I, I'd like to see it without that. But I'm sold. I, like, I need to start a quarter-scale collection. I have this on pre-order already, but... I don't know why. I, I don't have a lot of props, and I've got the completely wrong hair setup for a Casey Jones mask, but I'll be damned if I don't love that thing. Both versions of Pennywise, I haven't seen the new movie yet. Uh, my kids liked it, so I probably like it. But to get a curry Pennywise, uh, this picture is scaring me right here, and I'm just looking into space. There's. If, in case you don't know, there's nothing for me right here. But just thinking about that picture, Mm. No. There was this diorama piece that had all the turtles on it, and at first I thought, they expanded the turtles line, but they made a point to say they can't really say much about turtles, but the diorama itself is in uh, prototype stages. They're looking at price, they're looking at, you know, how hard it would be to manufacture, to ship and such. They get a lot of questions about the dioramas, people wanting to know if they could just buy them. And yeah, a lot of people can make this stuff, but there's also a lot of people that just want to go to the store and buy shit like this. So that's what they're looking at here. Ultimate Gremlin Q3 2018, looking very sweet. The Crash Bandicoot stuff looks just as fantastic in person as it does in the promotional images. There's a deluxe version with hoverboard, and the crate that's under it is actual plastic this time around. With the first Crash, that's just a cardboard piece that you fold up, put together. This one is actually plastic. And then the Crash with the goggles and the jetpack, that doesn't come off, so there's no articulated eyebrows with that one. But with the other two, yes. And that... I, I don't know why that is such a huge selling point for me. Wandered by Square Enix and they had the Bring Arts near Automata figures on display. 
I, I'm glad I pre-ordered these. I, they look amazing in person. I have no idea what the property is, or I, I've never played the video game, but they look alike. But they look like a great action figures. I do think they have been pushed back to April, though. I, I got an email from Ami Ami, and then I saw the placard at the show. Bluefin had the SH Figure Arts Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles on display. Unfortunately, Shredder looks like it is a no-go. It just seems like it's not going to happen. There was quite the Dragon Ball display that we've been seeing a lot overseas. It has all the characters in it looking great, looking amazing. Storm Collectibles was included in this booth. They were showing off a bunch of the Mortal Kombat stuff, stuff we haven't seen, stuff that looks just as great as what has come before. The Street Fighter display had a bunch of characters, just standy cards like, hey, maybe, coming, look out. Had the Injustice statues, they're going to be actual figures, and that would be Darkseid and Lobo. And then the Mike Tyson figure was on display. They also had the manga realization figures. Seeing them right there in front of me, as much as I like anything Deadpool, they may be a little bit large for me. They are 7 inch scale. They won't fit in with anything else I have. And I'm still playing with the fact that if I buy one, I'll need more. Then down on the model kit line, I said a little bit about this before my Hasbro and Mattel video. Bluefin is bringing in the action figure model kits for Star Wars. That in itself is a triumph. Now that is just for Bluefin though. I was told that it doesn't open up the license for online overseas distributors. Ami Ami, HLJ, such and such, them and them, and of course them. And it was up in the air on who was going to be released in the line to the U.S. or wherever Bluefin distributes to, but it looks like they're going to be in waves of three. The first wave being Boba Fett, Darth Vader, and Stormtrooper, which is pretty much, you know, popular kits. And then the second wave or second assortment would be Kylo Ren and then Han and Luke in Stormtrooper gear. Bluefin runs about a month behind distribution overseas. Uh, they have to get the stuff to them and then distribute it out to their retailers. So there's a little gap there, so I can see Han and Luke coming at the same time. And from what I was told, both figures look even better in person with their face printing technology. And then finally, at least as far as go, and unless I find more pictures in my folder that I've been scrolling through as we go, it would be Mezco. And he had a hell of a show. Whenever it first showed up on Saturday, that was the booth that was just packed all to hell that you could hardly get in to take pictures. Now, they were showing a lot of older stuff, which is very, very cool to see it again in person. I need that Popeye. If you look at close at the hands, his fingernails are all dirty, like he's actually been doing work if this was a real person. I know it's a cartoon, shut up. Got the Thor Ragnarok, Thor and Hulk looking just as great because I watched that movie one and a half times on the flight, so my mind was ready to see it. But I was so intensely focused on them that I didn't realize there was a hella up above them. She looks a little bit bored and she looks a little bit more built than she was in the movie. Again, that's fresh on my mind because I watched the movie. Not that I look at stuff like that. I was looking at costume details perverts. Get to see the Netflix Daredevil again. I like seeing it in action. It gives me a better idea of what it's going to look like. But we also see the Netflix Punisher, which kicks absolute ass. And then probably our only action figure chance at the, the first costume Daredevil with the black scarf, the black costume. See the punk Joker. We see the ultimate Joker. We see the ascending knight Batman. And then of course the sovereign knight Batman. We find out that it was actually in that silhouette and he just comes with an alternate head with shorter ears and then another long-eared head with battle damage. I would have liked to have seen an unmasked head, but what you gonna do? The previously announced John Wick figure was on display. This is the one a lot of people were talking about. A lot of people asking if it came with a pencil. Had the Michael Myers. I'm not a huge horror fan, but it looks good. Another set of Ghostbusters figures, but these are slowly, well, slowly, slowly, slowly growing on me because we've had a lot of, lot of, lot of time to look at them. But what I heard, I, I didn't hear directly from Mezco's mouth. Mezco has a, has a big mouth with a bunch of toys in it. I didn't hear directly from the company, but word was that the Ghostbusters come in a set. There were a lot of others that have been previously announced or well previously released or we've seen for a long time. There were the Spider-Mans, the Black Panthers, the Doctor Stranges. I'm saying those plural but there was only one of each. Well Spider-Man had two. 
maybe three figures. But the new stuff was what was exciting. This, the glass case, that was the hardest to get to. The cable looks amazing. It's not fair that they put this out right after the Deadpool one starts hitting. I dig the Marvel Legends one. I, that's probably my favorite version, the very Liefeld one. But this, this also strikes a chord too. I don't know, there's something there. His dad, not so much. Cyclops, I know they called him Slim, but he seems really scrawny, really elongated. Uh, there's just some, and then the extra design on the blue, it just didn't do it for me simply because of who it is. Or maybe I have a mental block of X-Men in this line because I have the Tiger Stripe Wolverine. I just never opened it. Blade's an odd one. It looks mostly like Wesley Snipes, but not quite. That that Mezco twist on it. We just got a Marvel Legends one, but I do not care about that figure at all. I'm all about this one, I think. The John Stewart Green Lantern. What I said about Cyclops, throw all that out the window. I do like that on the Green Lantern costume. I don't know, it, it breaks it up a little bit. It brings some flavor. A little bit Green Lantern movie-ish, but I'm okay with that. It's not, you know, completely covered in something. The dark side we've been seeing for a while, but it's one of those that every time I see it, I think, I need that. And then Sunday was Mattel. I don't know what Mattel's deal is. They showed some new stuff, but they seem just like for as big as they actually are, they should care a little bit more and not just when it comes to making the figures i mean the way they treat <laughs> i know we're just fan sites we're free advertising i get that but to blatantly you know put that in our face as we're walking through i don't know but i do throw a lot of shit at mattel so who am i to talk about respect but they got us all in line they got us through we walked through some corridors where we weren't allowed to take any pictures or actually really look they just they were just like hey we need to get you through all these people in suits keep keep moving fanboys keep moving but they got us back to the collectors area where we were allowed to start taking pictures and the Mattel multiverse the first was the Clayface wave and then the next one was the Lex Luthor wave it's got the Simon Baz Green Lantern Vixen Wonder Woman uh, Gotham by Gaslight Batman and then a couple of versions of the Ray. I want to like these, but I know that the prototypes always look <laughs> way better than the final product here. It's the colors that are catching me. They showed a DeVito Penguin to go along with the uh, TV series Flash and the Val Kilmer Batman. I really, really like this. I, I, I like the colors. of. The, I wish it was just like this. Unfortunately, they didn't show the Linda Carter Wonder Woman, if that's still a thing or if that was just an accidental leak prototype hey we're thinking about this not actually doing it type thing this is what it's like trying to take pictures when we're all huddled together sometimes people get in the way that it happens after this many years I've got quite a few pictures on my hard drive that look like this but they also showed an assortment with Bizarro and I think this may be my favorite DC figure that's shown he's got the suit jacket he's got the glasses like he's in some kind of disguise and then there's a very stylized which I'm I'm told is the new look for Beast Boy and Kid Flash. And this assortment also comes with extra pieces for your clay face with the blade and the big ball with spikes. I don't know if the spoiler and Harley is going to be like the Wonder Woman and Wonder Girl where it was just the two of them for that assortment, but they were showing these two just by themselves. I feel like I should know who the head is, and but for the life of me, I cannot remember who the hell that is. They showed an Injustice Batman and Superman. Again, I don't know if this is the whole wave or the start of a wave or what is going on with this. Nobody was actually around to answer any questions. There were some people with clipboards, but it was more directing traffic than it was actually answering. The Jurassic Park stuff, I actually have more interest in that than I do the DC line. I definitely want this T-Rex, although I have heard that there is a larger version that is maybe less articulated but the prices on all this seems very very reasonable I mean 40 bucks for a big t-rex and I would say this thing's about this big it, it it's a good size I'll need one for a t-rex and then I'll need one to paint red for a devil dinosaur this huge thing it was a, it was the whole display I'd say this big sure it doesn't have a lot of articulation but that's a lot of toy for 30 bucks there were two versions of the villain dino uh, one has more articulation than the other so uh, it's a higher price point because of that extra articulation and then all the various other dinosaurs I'm not gonna go into the names because they've probably changed since I was a kid I used to call them you know triceratops 
and the Stegosaurus, and but I don't know if that's correct anymore. They all look great. They all look fairly in scale with each other, especially the Raptors. There's different versions to give you different crouches to make them look different from each other. It's not just a different paint job. It's a sculpt change, too. On the wrestling side of things, I'm, I, I love wrestling, obviously. I just don't buy the WWE figures from Mattel. There's just too many. I can't keep track of what's out there, what's come before, what needs to come out. But Mickey James looks a little bit hunchback. I, I don't know. But I'll have to get Matt. I, I get any version of Matt Hardy. Wonderful! Yes! Uh, but there was also the Elias. It looked pretty good. The Triple H, the modern version with no hair. It, it looked better than I thought it would. And then the classic, well, classic... Kurt Angle with the milk hose with WCW Stone Cold and Stephanie McMahon. It was hilarious then. It'd be cool to have it in plastic form. And then they rounded us up and moved us out. Kind of keep a close eye that we weren't really looking side to side at the various other stuff. I don't know. It just seems like Mattel's in the business to make toys, but they don't really have anybody that plays with toys. If that makes any sense. And there we go, most of other Toy Fair. I'm sure I missed something. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know down in the comments. Hasbro was only there for the off-site presentation. They came in, did that, and was gone. So it wasn't, you know, that we could ask a lot of questions. But all in all, I really enjoyed my first Toy Fair, and I enjoyed my first time in New York. The traveling kind of sucked, but what you gonna do? Now we're on the road to San Diego. Do it all again. If you like this Toy Fair recap, comment, like, subscribe. Catch you on the foosh.